So today we are not talking about systems in depth, but we're talking about very easy ways how to create a process to really scale your productivity and get more done. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of Share Diversity. If you are new, salam. Make sure to subscribe to this channel. If you have been here before, thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate your time and attention. I cannot wait to jump into this episode. Today we are talking about a topic that all of us need to hear, which is productivity. And we need to remind ourselves of productivity. But instead of just listing all these productivity tips that everyone always tells you, we today talk about how to scale productivity. First of all, why is it important to scale productivity? We go back to the definitions of the two words. So productivity is the effectiveness of productive effort, especially in industry, as measured in terms of rate of output per unit of input. Converting inputs into useful outputs. So productivity actually means converting inputs into outputs. We need to understand what is an input and what is an output. An input would be time, money, or energy. An output, for example, would be a product, a service, or more money. It could also be a written piece. So the input would be your creativity and the output would be a written piece, a blog, maybe also a video or a podcast. Now we come to what does scalability mean? Scalability is the capability of a system, network, or process to handle a growing amount of work or its potential to be enlarged to accommodate growth. It means scaling up your productivity capacity. Scalability is a capability of a system. So today we are not talking about systems in depth, but we're talking about very easy ways how to create an environment, to create a process to really scale your productivity and get more done. The first tip I will give you on your way is be proactive. Being proactive means you are planning. If you have an appointment, for example, put it in your calendar when it is, with whom it is, when do you need to prepare and why you are doing it. It is always harder to say, nah, let me maybe do this another time, if you actually know why you are doing it, why it is so important for you. Planning also involves setting a deadline. A big major tip in this set a deadline before the actual deadline so plan an excess day to actually deliver early you don't want yourself to mess up the schedule because you fail to plan in the time that you need don't even let that happen plan in advance another way of being proactive is do the thing when it needs to be done a very important book that you should read and you should study on this is eat that frog from brian tracy I will leave the link below so you know exactly what book I'm talking about and I will also leave our bookshelf so you can check out other books that we would recommend for you. So Eat That Frog from Brian Tracy. I will just summarize it a bit and I will also give you another tip. If you want to read books but you don't have too much time and if you want to find out which books are good, either check out our bookshelf or go on Blinkist. We're not endorsing this app, but I just find it very interesting. It's a great app for you if you want to check out if a book really excites you. So if you see and hear, oh, this book is great, but you kind of like don't know if it's really something for you, you can check out the app. They give you like a summary of the book, like really precise five to 10 minute summary of the book. And you can really check out, is it worth it to get the book and really study it? Or am I cool with this description? <laughs> so check that out. Eat That Frog is a book that is very important. And I will give you just like a couple of steps for you to know how you can apply it in your life. First of all, make use of your unproductive time. What is unproductive time, you ask me? Well, the average driver spends 500 to 1000 hours on the road each year. That is a lot of time. Unproductive time is, for example, when you commute, also your lunch break, your t coffee time. So a great alternative of doing nothing is actually studying. So you can listen to a podcast that is relevant for your industry of what you want to learn, or you can listen to an audiobook. You can get a real book and read it. You can write down brainstorming ideas on your phone or on a piece of paper, get your notebook if you want to, and you can even speak it to your phone. In case you're driving yourself, please don't write anything down or like handle your phone, just like read it in your phone, read it out loud. Um, so you have like a brainstorming session while you're doing nothing. The second tip is know yourself. Knowing yourself means understanding your nature. How many hours of sleep do you really need? Do you work out before or after work or even in a lunch break? 
What foods or drinks keep you energetic and healthy? What times are best for prayers? Apart from Salah, obviously, Dua can get you over procrastinating or dealing with defeat or negativity a lot of times. So you need to really schedule in your prayers. Another way to know yourself is understand your talents. What is giving me energy and what is dragging my energy? What am I good at? What am I bad at? What are the things that come natural to me and what are the things that really take more effort of me? Or maybe you don't need to do them or you can do them at certain times of the day. So early in the day, you can do something that requires a lot of energy from you. And later in the day, you do the things that come natural to you or the things that don't require too much effort from you and don't drag your energy because obviously at the end of the day, you don't have so much energy left. Also, what you can do to really scale on your talents is you really focus 100% on your talents and what comes natural to you and everything else you try to like outsource to a person that does it better. Maybe you save some money and really give it to someone, pay them to do it, use Fiverr. Fiverr is a really great place if you need to outsource material, research or just like work that you don't do yourself or you're not really good at. Give it to the talent that is good at it and save your effort and energy to go 100% on your talents and taking all out of your talents and energy. A third point you can learn from this book is make appointments with yourself. This means hold yourself accountable. There's really just one person in the world that should control your vision, your plans and your dreams. And that's you. The ones who have taken their lives to success have taken their lives into their own hands. And if you are dependent, you should only be dependent on God, not dependent on people, not dependent on society or media, because only God has written down the dreams that you're supposed to put into reality. So block your time in chunks. Take like time chunks out of your calendar and block the calendar at this time. You can see more in the video how to be consistent, but just for you to understand, you assign time for the tasks that you put into your to-do lists. You don't just put them into your to-do list and then you're like, okay, let me just do this, this, this. No, you can assign time that these different things in your to-do list take and then you put time chunks to really perfectly 100% work on this one. So what you can take from the eat that frog philosophy is do the most important thing first thing in the morning. That's where the phrase eat that frog comes from because you eat the frog in the morning. You do the thing that is uncomfortable but it's so important. It is an uncomfortable call for example or a sales pitch or editing work that is really dragging you. Do the thing that makes you most uncomfortable because when you are done with it, it gives you an extra reward. The extra reward is the reward of getting it done. You are done with it. You have nice things waiting for you now. The reward is you push and you train yourself to push yourself to do more uncomfortable things until this getting out of your comfort zone becomes your comfort zone. Another way of being proactive is being honest to yourself. Because even when you're self-employed and you're this founder and business owner and entrepreneur and all these beautiful terms, life isn't always the beautiful Insta story that everyone shows you. Things just have to be done. So get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And the last tip of being proactive, go to bed early. You're proactive in planning your energy. Go sleep. Go to bed early and wake up early. Second tip is understand linear versus exponential growth. In business and in life, we have activities that are day-to-day -day activities and they bring us to a linear growth. This is for example, you have a business and you're doing marketing. The day-to-day -day marketing is you're just posting news from your business and you're just posting what is new. This is the new product, this is the new course I'm offering, this is the events that we're holding and you're communicating the vision, you're writing newsletters. All these day-to-day -day activities, these are operations that will bring you linear growth. The other side is exponential growth. Exponential growth means you are doing innovative things. For example, a campaign, you're creating a video out of your newest product and you're showing how to use it. You're doing this campaign with new people, with people who have never used your product before and they're just exploring it. And you can see the way they use your product. This is an innovative campaign, something that is new. And you push on this campaign so far that you reach new audiences. Day-to-day -day activities is more gradually growing the reach and entertaining the people that are already following you. 
but innovative campaigns, the exponential growth, is the things you are doing in your life to really push your business. You're collaborating with new people, you're going into events, you're going into courses and you're doing more for your business because you want to reach a wider audience. Focus on keeping the balance, but understand which type of activities give you exponential growth and then double down on these. The third tip I will give you is batch your work. You need to understand the difference between effectiveness and efficiency. Do you also know this quote, effectiveness is doing the right things, but efficiency is doing things right. There might be some things that are effective, but not efficient. For example, you were effective in doing sales calls, creating new products, doing a strategy session, going for a workout, having a healthy breakfast and lunch, all these things that are effective, you can have them done at the end of the day, but they might not have been efficient enough. If your brain has to jump between different actions, it gets distracted. So focus. Badging work is a great way to focus. For example, you can badge your content. If you're writing content for your blog or for your podcast or for your videos, you need to badge that content. So for example, you take a Sunday off and you just go to coffee shops or you go to a park, you go to a beautiful place which is just giving you creative energy and you write things down. Put on a list on what topic you want to talk about and you write down. You write it out, out of your soul. You go research, do your writing, all the creative work, badge the content on one beautiful creative day. Another way to batch is batch your products. For example, you're an artist and you're creating designs, digital art, for example. But you can also batch that one. You can get a beautiful day, just do your art. And then at the other day, maybe you do print on demand, maybe you work with suppliers, maybe you do your production line yourself and you only do your production. Batch that product creation. Another way to batch is batch your marketing. If you have to do social media marketing and you all have to do that, you like it or not. If you're batching a marketing, you can create schedules. There are some tools online, I will give you a list here that you might want to use to really schedule your social media marketing. Visual, video, audio, whatever it is that you're using for marketing purposes, just batch it all on one day, you schedule your whole month out, maybe you even schedule three months in advance, whatever you want to do, but batch the work because if you're jumping between actions, your brain is not going to hold up to it. There's studies in neuroscience that shows us if we have to always keep jumping between things, there is no mindfulness, there is no focus, there is no efficiency in what we're doing. Another thing you can do, and I love that, is batching PR networking and collaborations. If you're living out of town and you have to go to the city center to go and do your networking, do that. Do that one week, get an apartment in the city, stay at a friend's place, just go to events. Go and network, write down people's names, text them on the day and you only focus on that because that is an exponential growth that we talked about before. Collaborations, networking with people. You never know who knows who and who's interested in what you do and what you can bring to the table. So batch the networking collaboration and this is especially great for introverts or people who just don't like to have all the time people around them and talk to them you can really batch it into like one whole week go all out on socializing being funny being happy getting to know more people all that fun stuff and just batch that work also collaborations write people online draft a message make it personal to the person go into connecting to people seeing how you can give value to them and the fourth tip is create a system i will tell you this this is so important this is what we talked about in scalability in scalability you need a system that creates this growth the exponential growth and as we we're talking about productivity you need a system to be productive we all know that 90 percent of what we do are habits eventually systems when we were children our parents told us to brushed our teeth in the morning and in the evening. That is a system. They created a system for us and then it became a habit. We don't have to think about it anymore. We just are very productive brushing our teeth. <laughs> you have to create a system to scale. If you want to scale, for example, your production line, write down every step that you do in your production. And eventually, if you're building a team, even if it's just one person joining you, they know exactly which steps to follow. Building a team, for example, is a vision in the future. They know this is a system and this is the vision behind the company. These are the steps we need to take. There's not much thinking about it. So where do we go from here? People are much more innovative. If there's a system in place for day-to-day -day activities, they give you linear growth. It's not a big deal. So people get more creative and seeing 
How can we innovate this? What campaigns? What is our exponential growth activities that we need to put in? It gives you a vision to scale. Also, the onboarding is more efficient. As I said, if someone is joining your team, they know exactly what you do. You don't need to be there for five hours showing them what to do. You give them the process and eventually they can give the process to another person. You can do that, for example, through Google Drive. That's what we do. So we create a system in Google Drive where the process of each visual creation, writing creation, everything that goes from step to step, uploading our videos and our podcasts and our products, all this is in the Google Drive. People on our team can access it to be more efficient in their work. Also, you're faster adaptable to change. Whatever is in the system, you can change it easily if you want to. If you see it's not productive enough, how can we scale the productivity in this one? Just look at your system and change it. Another great point is what we do as well, tracking mistakes. You cannot avoid to make mistakes, but you should avoid to make them five times in a row. If you write down what mistakes you have done and what you do to overcome them and you share that with your team, it's way easier to track mistakes and never do them again. Also, this tracking of mistakes brings accountability and accountability brings independency and independency brings innovation. If you want to grow exponentially, create a system that brings growth. Obviously, we all want our work to be toothbrushing, so make it a habit. Check out the video, How to be Consistent. I will link it down below and you can see it up here as well. It will show you how to limit your decision making and just be more efficient. Make things your habits. These were my four tips to scale your productivity. And now I would love to hear from you. Which is the tip you found most useful and what brings you in a state of productivity? Leave it down in the comments and share your diversity with us. And if you like this video, subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and just keep going for your dreams. And don't forget, the real deal is going on at sharediversity.com. So jump on the newsletter, check out the shop, especially the bookshelf. Inshallah, like I said, eat that frog. I will leave the link below in the description and I will see you. Subscribe. Inshallah. See you next time. Assalamu alaikum. After what? Calm down. Thank you. The reward. The extra reward. The raw reward. 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 Okay. The extra reward is. Inshallah.